The release of Dragon's Dogma 2 has reignited the long-standing gamer debate about 30 FPS. Many next-gen console owners feel that 30 FPS should have been left behind or at least simply an option, like if I want to choose between quality and performance mode. Some feel that it just doesn't matter. If the game is good, 30 FPS is tolerable. Well, Dragon's Dogma 2 is running at an uncapped 30 FPS on the PS5 and the Series X, which is probably the weirdest thing I have seen in a while, uncapped 30 frames per second. Uh, even John Linneman from Digital Foundry, he expressed, expressed worry about this whenever the first initial previews were out there. IGN had their video and he commented, he said, the frame rate is basically 30 FPS with poor frame pacing, so it'll look much worse. So this is because it isn't capped at 30. Uncapped 30 is just an incredibly bizarre choice so that's another aspect of why you might be hearing people sort of being critical of the performance of the game on console so first i want to walk through what exactly happened we're hearing different things the pc crowds you know expressing different things about performance but there's also some quick glances at the reviews it seems to indicate that this isn't having much of an effect on the game's overall score now we will wait and see what the steam user score and the console user score lands on because because if this game is performing rather poorly on most rigs, unless you're an incredibly strong PC owner, then it might actually hurt the game's user score. It would not be the first time that the users disagree with the review outlets because of performance issues. Uh, Jedi Survivor, if anybody remembers that, that game still is terrible on Steam, and the developers should be embarrassed with the fact that they basically abandoned the game. So secondly, I will tell you what I think with respect to the future of 30 FPS games. I'm going to address the notion that there is sort of a 30 FPS game trend returning, like that we're headed backwards. I am going to address that because I think that is just a ludicrous claim that's not founded in anything. So first, what exactly happened? Well, when Dragon's Dogma 2 preview started rolling out, it became clear that the 30 FPS rumors were true. There was only one outlet that was claiming that the game was running at an uncapped 60 when they played the demo, and that was the only outlet reporting it. Nobody else chimed in. Nobody said, oh yeah, you know, it's uh, it's it's running at 60. We were there. We you know, Nobody would corroborate those claims. It was just one outlet. There were even videos out there claiming to debunk the 30 FPS rumors about Dragon's Dogma 2. Then an interview surfaced where it was confirmed that it would be uncapped 30 FPS on console, which again is the weirdest thing I've ever heard. Why would you not cap this game at 30 FPS? So fast forward to when reviews started dropping, performance was mentioned, but seemingly it did not hurt the scores all that much. One PC reviewer, however, did remark on Twitter and said the following. I mentioned in the review, but it's worth iterating, that Dragon's Dogma 2 is incredibly CPU intensive. My Ryzen 7, 64 gig DDR5, and RTX 49 90 desktop had dips to 50 fps in vernworth all cpu bottlenecks so essentially they're saying when you get into certain areas it dips like populated areas towns like that and then they went on to say that their laptop their gaming laptop was pretty good at 1440 30 with high settings and they said this they said the game is very demanding and don't expect to be playing at 60 fps with a machine any older than a year or so So needless to say, this game is demanding. This guy is saying, listen, if you have a rig that's older than a couple of years or older than a year, you're struggling. You're going to struggle to hit 60 FPS. So some would argue that that means the game is poorly optimized and they're throwing too much at the CPU or it's it's bottlenecking at the CPU, essentially. Now, Rock Paper Shotgun did a review and they stated the following. They said, Dragon's Dogma 2 suffers a performance collapse every time you go near a settlement, likely doesn't make the most of your hardware and allows only small frame rate improvements by dropping the quality settings. So even if you think like, oh, I'll go in, I'll tweak it, I'll tune things down, I'll turn things down. I'll get good performance. That's not working according to more than just this review. I'm seeing a lot of people saying like they just can't squeeze much out of the game even when they lower settings. Now, some are pointing to the engine and they're saying, well, it's the engine that's the cause of this. And listen, to be clear, the game is receiving extremely high praise. I'm not talking about the actual game itself. We're talking about 
performance. We're talking about the the way that the game has been optimized. Comparisons to Elden Ring and exploring that world are being made by some reviewers. Some are claiming this is their game of the year already. And for a lot of us, this just merely adds to the frustration. It's sort of like when I had to stop playing The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. I just couldn't deal with the frames per second being so low. It even fell below 30 frames at certain times if it was raining or something. And I knew that I was playing a fantastic game. I knew that that game would be nominated for Game of the Year, and it was likely a front runner, but I just couldn't tolerate the 30 FPS. So hearing all of the praise for Dragon's Dogma 2, it's like it almost makes it worse that they were not able to optimize this thing any better. Currently on Metacritic, it has an 87 for PS5, a 90 for PC, and an 88 for Xbox. Now, that was last night when I wrote this monologue. It may have moved a little bit, but with the number of reviews that were coming in, I don't think those scores are going to move much. Now, a quick skimming of the reviews. You see a lot of 100s, okay? Perfect scores. You see a lot of 90s. But as you scroll and you start reading the scores that are in the low 80s, you see some themes cropping up, saying that the game feels outdated, like it feels too similar to the original. And it's somewhat evenly split between the high praise and the more nuanced reviews. There were, when I checked, there were 24 reviews that were at a 90 or higher on Metacritic. There were 23 reviews that were in the 80s and down. So if you kind of separate those two groups, in my mind, the 90s and up are just like roaring praise. The 80s and down were more nuanced. A lot of the reviews in the 80s and down mentioned technical issues, clunkiness, or the game feeling outdated. While the reviews in the 90s and up, they just sort of see this game as a must play. And I'm going to be honest with you, this seems to mirror the debate about 30 FPS. There's the side that just doesn't care. They have probably played more next-gen games on quality mode. A lot of people just boot up games, they leave it on quality mode. 30 FPS doesn't bother them. But then there are those who want a 60 FPS game. They're going to be more likely to describe the game as clunky, as having technical issues. Oh, it feels outdated. Well, yeah, 30 FPS certainly does feel outdated to anybody who's been gaming the last four years on next-gen consoles where the vast majority of games are hitting 60 FPS. So you have to decide which type of player you are because it sounds like a fantastic game. It looks like a fantastic game, right? But if you're like me... I just think you're probably not going to be able to do it. You're just not going to be able to push through and deal with the issues and deal with the problems, or I'm sorry, the performance issues. Now, I had to agree with Donnie on Twitter from Pure Dead Gaming. He said that handing a game a 10 out of 10 while admitting that the performance is very rough, he said that that's BS. And I could not agree more. I, I said the same thing when Jedi Survivor got roaring scores. It got like 10s out of 10s, 9s out of 10s and it had glaring performance issues to give a game that has performance issues a perfect score i feel that is a misrepresentation of the product i consider that to be dishonest it's like you're not actually telling the consumer how the game is you're just sort of oh this is such a good game and then you're overlooking something that will hinder the average experience of anybody who's playing the game. I know Capcom is a media darling lately, and I know that Dragon's Dogma 2 is a highly anticipated game, but that doesn't mean you just overlook performance issues and hand a game a 10 or a 100. Review outlets are trusted, and consumers are going to see 100s, they're going to see 10 out of 10 scores, they're going to be blindsided when they play a game that just doesn't run that well. Now, I know for a fact that happened with Jedi Survivor. Many people bought it on the roaring praise of review outlets and you know people basically saying like oh this is one of the greatest games ever and then it had tons of issues and they felt like they sort of got tricked that leads me to telling you what i think about all of this okay First, I want to speak to where games are headed, all right? The last four years have made it very clear that games are not regressing at all. I've refused to uh, accept this false notion, okay? New tech is being developed, upscaling technology is improving, and a PS5 Pro is on the way that aims at targeting even better performance than we're currently getting. The notion that games are headed backwards has no basis. I believe it is commonly a narrative driven by people who are trying 
trying to defend or hand wave a 30 FPS game. They're either defending the fact that Xbox did it or they're defending Dragon's Dogma or they'll make up things like the consoles just aren't strong enough, right? They'll ignore the monsoon of 60 FPS games that we got this generation. Someone on Twitter even did the math. Less than 10 games out of over 3,000 are are at the 30 fps cap and then the rest have a 60 fps option or just run at 60 fps now does that sound like a trend less than 0.1 percent versus 99.9 percent of games that's not a trend at all this is completely fabricated it's made up if your favorite developer or platform delivered a 30 fps game you don't have to defend it you don't have to pretend like it's a trend or that well these consoles just aren't strong enough it's undeniably clear that the vast majority of developers are having no problem delivering 60 fps games this generation which means we have no reason to think that games will regress beyond that player expectations have changed Fortnite has been 60 FPS for a long time, and they even got their game to hit 60 FPS on old gen consoles. GTA 5 was recently updated to hit 60 FPS. The latest Call of Duty games are 60 with the 120 FPS modes as an option. Do you actually think the number of people that have played Fortnite, GTA 5, and Call of Duty, do you think that massive number of players are going to accept 30 FPS games in the future? I certainly don't. Now, there is talk that GTA 6 will be 30 FPS even on the PS5 Pro. Now, personally, I think much of the dialogue around the PS5 Pro is going to end up a lot like the dialogue that said the Series S would be stronger than the PS5. All those receipt polls were beautiful because people are getting ahead of themselves. They're talking about things that we know virtually nothing about. Speculation leading to hard conclusions is rather foolish. I would find it to be very strange that Rockstar spent a bunch of time updating GTA 5 to 60 FPS only to have people buy their sequel and then lose that performance. It. I will concede though, GTA 6 is just so big that people would overlook it. Now, I won't. I'm not going to overlook 30 FPS anymore. Are you kidding me? We're well beyond that this should be even accepted. So even if GTA 6 is 30 FPS, given the statistics currently of how many more 60 FPS games there are, it has to be said, outliers don't set trends. You cannot claim a trend of 30 FPS is happening when all of your examples will be outliers. They won't be in the majority. So the point that I'm really trying to make is what I put on the thumbnail. 30 FPS games, they have no future, okay? Now that doesn't mean that 30 FPS games can't be commercially successful. Dragon's Dogma 2 will likely do very well, and GTA 6 isn't really going to be slowed down by anything but I don't think there is a future where 30 FPS games are the norm they certainly already are being I think seeing less and less acceptance Gotham Knights tried to hide the fact that their game was 30 FPS they tried to hide it from the public they literally timed somebody out in their discord for asking if the game had 60 FPS as a mode now that means they were on standing orders to keep that quiet somebody instantly responded to the question and timed the person out. That means they were instructed to keep it from the public. They didn't want the public to know. Redfall not being at 30 uh, at 60 FPS, you know, was apologized for the fact that it launched without a 60 FPS mode. The infamous sticker that had to be put on the back of the game. Starfield didn't even include it in their Starfield Direct, even though we were told that they would answer that question in the Starfield Direct. They answered it in an interview after the fact, which is something that I always point out to people who say, well, 30 FPS is no big deal. There really isn't a difference. Well, if that's the case, then why not make it front and center in the marketing? Right? We went from consoles promising a standard output of 60 FPS and up to 120 FPS to devs trying to keep their performance a secret. If 30 FPS is totally fine, well, why not be upfront about it? Why don't you include it in the marketing? Why do you wait until the last possible moment to tell people? Well, we all know why. Because it isn't acceptable and it doesn't have a future in the gaming space we're dealing with old engines or creative decisions or poorly optimized games i was heavily critical of final fantasy 16 for this very reason we were told 
that it was going to show off the power of the PS5, and it looks like garbage when you're not in combat because it's a stuttering mess. It doesn't even keep a consistent frame rate going into the 30s and 40s, not even staying close to 60. And then when you're in combat, it's a lock 60. That's a creative decision that the developers made. If your game launches and is capped at 30 FPS and requires a top-of-the-line PC to maintain 60 FPS or above, that's a poorly optimized game. Just yesterday, Alex from Digital Foundry was talking about the Horizon Forbidden West PC port and about how great it was to have a game that could run well on low-end hardware. He was testing the game out on lower-end hardware and was thrilled with the results. Why? Because it's a well-optimized game. That's something that was worked on. Creative vision and great gameplay and good systems, well, they're deserving of praise, right? There's, I, it sounds like there's amazing things and good experiences to be had in Dragon. Dragon's Dogma 2. But who cares if you deliver it in a poorly optimized package? I wouldn't have been able to enjoy Elden Ring at 30 FPS, and it was a masterpiece. And the, those who will say, we'll just buy a PC, dude, well, that's a pretty terrible way to treat your customer base. Well, we didn't optimize our game very well, so here's subpar performance on next-gen consoles compared to thousands of other games that have come out that managed to hit 60 FPS. Oh, and you're going to need a really high-end PC to maintain good performance in our game. Well, that's a great way to shrink your market reach and with how many games are launching this year 2024 is so full and my backlog's enormous you can keep your 30 fps game i got plenty of other games to play so stop making 30 fps games prioritize performance and optimization so people don't have to literally upgrade their pc just to enjoy your video game i say this 30 fps games have no future and i have no future plans to buy them That's just my take. What's your take?